Welcome to the Structure Studios online video series. This video will explain Stage 7, Hardscapes. With Hardscapes, you will create the decks, retaining walls, and driveways in your design. Make sure to watch the Wood Deck video for information about creating custom wood decks. For this video, we'll set our grid to 1 foot and head to the Snaps menu to turn on Point, Line, and Grid. We'll also set the angle to World Angle and turn on Autocomplete. We'll first create a deck on the left side of the pool. Activate the Outline tool. Click the outside coping line at the bottom left corner of the pool and click again to start the outline. Move your mouse up the left side of the pool. Left click to stop our line at 23 feet. Click the orange endpoint to set the offset. Move your mouse to the left 3 feet and click to create the deck. In the panel, We'll leave the height set to 0 feet to remain flush with the pool and turn off coping. We'll now create a deck on the right side of the pool. Click the outside coping line at the bottom right corner of the pool and click again to start the outline. Move your mouse up around the right side of the pool. Left click to stop our line at 13 feet. Click the large orange endpoint to set the offset. Move your mouse to the right 3 feet and click to create a deck on this side. Right click on the deck and press View in 3D. The band of decking around the pool looks great, but we'd like to add an area for lounge chairs on each side. We'll head back to 2D to add more decking. Activate the rectangle tool and left click the top right corner of the deck. We want to add 8 feet of decking so we'll move our mouse to the right until the shape is 8 feet wide and then down until the shape aligns with the deck. When the length is 16 feet, left click to place it. Once the new deck is complete, we can leave it a separate shape or merge it with the decking around the pool. Let's activate the Move tool to merge the shapes. Hold down Control and left click the connecting deck. Once both shapes are selected and highlighted in white, Press Union to merge these shapes and have the extra lines removed. Now we'll add an area for lounge chairs on the left side of the pool. Activate the Rectangle tool and left click the top left corner of the deck. We'll move our mouse to the left until the shape is 7 feet wide and then down until the shape is 12 feet long and left click to place it. Let's also merge these two shapes. Activate the Move tool. Hold down Control and left click the connecting deck. Once both shapes are selected, press the Union button to merge them together. Next, we'll create a raised bond beam at the back of the pool. Activate the Outline tool. Click the outside coping line on the back left corner of the pool. Click again to start the outline. Move your mouse to the right to trace the back pool wall. Once we reach the right corner, and the length is 34 feet, left click to place it. Click the orange endpoint to set the offset. Move your mouse down one foot and left click to create the raised beam. Head to 3D to see our hardscape. We cannot see our bond beam because the height is set to zero feet. We want the bond beam to be two feet tall, so we'll type two in the height box in the panel. We'll also make sure our lip style is set to custom quarter round to match our pool lip. Later in the material stage, we'll apply different materials to our decks and raised bond beam. Now we want to add pavers separated by grass between the pool and house. Head back to 2D. Activate the rectangle tool. Our first paver will be aligned with the pool deck on the right. Move down one grid space and click to start the shape. Move the mouse to the left 4 feet, then down 3 feet, and click to create the paver. We want the paver to be flush with the ground, so we'll set the height to 0 feet. Once the shape is set, we can use copy-paste or shift-drag to add more pavers. First, press Ctrl plus C to copy the paver. When we press Ctrl plus V, the paver is attached to our cursor. Left-click to place it. Now align the shape one grid space to the left of our first paver. Now we'll use shift drag to add three more pavers in front of the pool. With the paver selected, 
hold down shift, and drag your cursor to place the next paver. As you shift drag to add another paver, the spacing is automatically distributed to match the distance. Once the pavers are in place, we'll select all five pavers to create another row. First, hold down the left mouse button to marquee select the pavers. With the five pavers selected, hold down the shift, then drag down to create a new row of pavers. Align these pavers with the first row and left click to place them. Let's add a few more pavers between the house and the pool deck on the right. Activate the rectangle tool. We want to start these pavers one foot away from the corner of the house with the 10 foot measure guide. Left click to start the shape. Move the mouse to the right three feet, then up four feet and click to create the paver. Now we'll shift and drag to add three more pavers, each placed one grid space apart in front of the house. Let's head to 3D to see our pavers. The pavers look great. We don't see a lip on our pavers because they're flush with the ground. To see a lip profile, the shape must be higher than the ground elevation. Next, we'll add a fire pit and curved seating wall in front of the pavers. Let's head back to 2D to create them. We'll use the measure guide to determine the location. Activate the measure tool and left click the bottom corner of the deck above the pavers. Measure to the right 10 feet and left click to set the distance. This marks the area for the fire pit. Now activate the line tool. Left click the end of the 10 foot measure guide to start the shape. Move your mouse to the left 9 feet and click. Draw up 12 feet and click. Then go to the right 9 feet and click. We want the seating wall to be curved, so we'll switch to the arc tool. Move your cursor to the left on a diagonal until the radius is 8 feet 6 inches and then left click. Trace the dotted circle until you reach the first point and then click. For this area, turn on coping and set the size to 1 foot. Next, we'll draw the seating wall on the curved portion of the hardscape. Activate the outline tool and click the top right corner of the arc. We want the outline placed right on top so press 0 and then enter on your keyboard. Now trace the arc all the way down and left click. Click the orange endpoint to set the width of the seat. Move the mouse until the offset shows 1 foot 5 inches and click. Set the height to 1 foot 6 inches and turn off coping. Next we want to draw the fire pit. We'll align the fire pit with the radius point of the seating wall. Activate the circle tool and left click on the radius point. Move your mouse to the right until you have a three foot radius and left click to place it. The height of this shape is automatically one foot six inches since the software remembers the height of the last hardscape we created. Now let's head to 3D to take a look. Our fire pit area looks great. We'll add the fire media, logs, and fire in later stages. We also notice the lower hardscape does not show coping next to the seating wall. If we would like to show coping here, double click the lower hardscape and turn on all sides option in the panel. When this is off, coping will not show on the side that borders the taller hardscape. Next, we'll create an area for the outdoor kitchen on the left side of the house. Let's head back to 2D. Activate the rectangle tool and left click the left corner of the house. Draw to the right 13 feet and then up 19 feet and left click. The size looks good, but we notice there's a two foot space between this new deck and the row of pavers. We can fix this with the divide tool. Activate the divide tool and add a point aligned with the top row of pavers. This will divide our line into two segments. Activate the move tool to click the midpoint of the eight foot segment and press delete. Now we'll activate the line tool. Click the top orange endpoint and draw to the right one foot and click. Then down eight feet and double click to complete the shape. The last hardscape we'll create is the driveway at the front of the house. Activate the rectangle tool. Click the left corner of the house to start the driveway. 
draw down the 25 foot measure guide, then to the right 25 feet and left click. Let's take a look at our driveway in 3D. Our driveway is level and doesn't follow the slope. We want the driveway flush with the terrain, so we'll check Follow Terrain in the panel. When this option is on, our hardscape will follow the slope we set in terrain. We can also add a coping border to our driveway and set the width. This completes instruction on hardscapes. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit structurestudios.com/help.